My name is Sir Newa William Kihimbo. Today again, we are going to proceed on with our lesson. In the last lesson, we had a summary of the book We Not Child. We went as far as um, passing through the story about We Not Child, and I hope you understood the summary and you can stand now in a position to discuss the characters and characterization. I'm sure that you marked some of the names of the characters who were involved in uh, the novel with Not Child and therefore it won't be difficult for us to pass through the characters and the characterization. Uh, the first character that we're going to discuss today is Njoroge, the main character. This is the main character of the book whose main goal was, throughout the book was to become as, as educated as possible. That's why the first day when he was sent to school, he was very, very excited. He knew that liberation of Kenya could not come without education. And that's why he had that demand. He was very eager to go to start at school, knowing that his future and the future of his country depended much on education. Uh, the second character is Ngoto. Hope you remember this character. Goto is Njoroge's father. He works for Mr. Horace, that white settler, and is trusted and respected until when he attacks Jacobo at the workers' strike. You know, uh, in the workers' strike, it was found that uh, Goto participated fully, and therefore Mr. Horace and Mr. Jacobo decided to unite together uh, to suck him out of the plot that was given by Mr. Jacob, uh, being uh, the ringleader of the strike. So he's fired and the family is forced to move to another section of the country. I think you remember that he was given a piece of land by Ghana, that, uh, uh, that carpenter. He gave him a piece of land where he, he could live with his family. Uh, but, but actually, the reason behind is why uh, God was sucked out of the job and sucked out of the piece of land that was given by uh, Mr. Jacob is because of this strike whereby Ngoto was involved. So the punishment for him was to be sucked out of the sucked out of job but also to be removed from the piece of land which was given uh, to him by, uh, by Jacob, the black settler. Another character in our novel with no child is Nyokabi, Nyokabe Njeri. I hope you remember these two, Nyokabe and Njeri. Uh, these are Goto's wives, the two wives of Ngoto. And uh, Njeri is Ngoto's first wife and the mother of Boro, Kamau, and Kori. These are brothers to Njoroge, Boro, Kamau, and Kori but they belong to another mother, that is Jerry. And uh, another character is Boro. You remember this gentleman, Boro, son of Jerry, who fights for the white man in the Second World War. He participated in the Second World War and he survived. Unlike Mwangi, who passed away during the struggle. But also, you have to remember, God also participated in the Second World War and he survived. And then we had the skills. He gained some skills uh, 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 from the war. You, you know, um, when, um, when they fought in the Second World War, they were trained by the white people themselves. And therefore, they had some skills, which now they had to apply during the struggle for independence in Kenya. The returning soldiers. I think you remember one of the factors which led to nationalism in Africa was the role of the returning soldiers. Returning soldiers. For the history takers, I think you understand it. So, son of Jerry who fights for the white man um, in the Second World War or World War II. Boro was the leader of the Mau Mau. Boro was the leader of the Mau Mau. And uh, uh, Boro murdered Mr. Horans. This should read Boro. Boro murdered Mr. Horans. He also killed Jacob. So the murder of the two 
um, land owners or settlers, the black settler and the white settler. Mr. Horan being the white settler, while Mr. Jacob being the, um, the black settler, all of them were killed by Boro, the Mau Mau reader, the Mau Mau activist. Boro he was one of the feared uh, activists or the Mau Mau activists in Kenya. Actually, Boro stands for a certain character, the real character, and we talk of Dedan Kimath, uh, General China, and others who are very famous uh, and notable Mau Mau fighters. Mwihaki, you remember this girl, Mwihaki? Uh, Mwihaki is Njoroge's best friend and the daughter of Jacobo. Njoroge's best friend and daughter of Jacobo. When it's revealed that his family, uh, uh, his family killed Jacobo, most likely Boro, as I pointed out earlier, the one who killed Jacobo is Boro, but Boro belongs to Ngoto's family. I remember the relationship between Mwihaki, Mwihaki and Njoroge. They were friends, best friends. So Mwihaki distances herself from Njoroge after the killings of her father. Um, Jacobo, this is Mwihaki's father, and an important landowner, a black uh, settler, a black settler. He is promoted to be a village chief. Because of the work that he was doing for the white people, they promoted him to be a chief, a chief of the village. By then, during colonial rule, a chief of the village was a very big uh, man, very big man and respected by the authorities. And therefore, he could use that power to suppress his fellow Africans, as how Jacob did. Mr. Horans, the white settler. This is a white English man, a white settler who came to Kenya and now he owns a big land. He owns a farm known as a plantation. Uh, and originally, the land belonged to Ngoto. You remember in the, in the narration when I narrated, when we were passing through the summary, I told you that the people of Kikuyu, Kikuyu land, central part of Kenya, believed that the land was given to them by Moon and Kikuyu, Moon, their ancestors. And therefore, when the white people came, they grabbed some of the land, they alienated some of the land from the indigenous, like Ngoto. Because Ngoto's land was taken, part was taken by Mr. Horans, the white settler, and part of the land was taken by Jacob, or the black settler. And therefore, they remained to be landowners. And you can even remember the stories that he used to tell his sons during the evening that we had the land, but the land was taken by the white settlers. So, this is a white Englishman, a white settler who came to Kenya and loved most of the land. And actually, the land belonged to Ngoto, to Ngoto's ancestors, Mumbi and Ikuyu. He had three children. He had three children among them, uh, being Peter, who died in the Second World War. He also participated, uh, one of the sons of Mr. Horans, Mr. Uh, Peter, participated in the Second World War, just the same like Ngoto's son, Boro, who also participated in the Second World War. But it's very unfortunate that uh, um, uh, Peter passed away during the war, during the struggle, during the fight. And we are told that Mr. Horans was uh, appointed as a DO, district officer, to save the colonial government interest. You know, most of the settlers we are very close to the colonial government because most of them were the white people, uh, with the exception of few like Jacobo, who were the black settlers. And therefore, all the favors from the government were given to them. Like uh, uh, Mr. Horans was promoted to be a DO, a district officer, a very big land uh, during that time. And uh, now, those are some of the characters some of the characters, but also we had some other characters like Mwangi. Mwangi was Ngoto's uh, son, one of uh, Njoroge's brothers who passed away during the war. Because those who participated in the war were Ngoto participated in the Second World War with his two sons, that is Boro and Mwangi. So Mwangi passed away during 
during the war. Uh, but Boro and his father and Woko survived. And when they returned back, so they were the, you know, like, uh, um, they participated fully in the reparation of Tinja because they had already, you know, they had all the techniques that they acquired during, uh, during the war. Because they fought together with the white people and therefore they knew the weaknesses of the white people, they knew the techniques of fighting, and therefore it was very easy for them uh, to resort into gorilla war fighting against the white people themselves because they knew their weaknesses and they knew how they could attack them and eliminate them. So Boro uh, came to be one of the warriors, the Mau Mau activists, the Mau Mau warriors who was very dangerous because he had all the skills of fighting. So having gone through uh, uh, the characters, let us now give a look to the thematic analysis of the novel. Thematic analysis of the novel. And here we have to lose the themes, the themes which are found in the novel Weep Not Child. Weep Not Child. What are the themes which can be found in the, uh, in the book Weep Not Child? But before we proceed on the, uh, the analysis of the themes, that the thematic analysis of the, uh, of the novel, maybe it's better to have a clue. What does it mean by Weep Not Child? I think up to the moment you have um, a notion or you have uh, the image. Uh, what is weep not child? We are talking about the main character Njoroge. He was a child by then because he was at the age of, you know, at primary school, you know the age of a primary school goer or a, a pupil at primary school can be at the, at the age of 10, 12, 13, uh, up to standard 7, can be at the age of 14. So he's still known as a child because he's below 18 years old. So when you talk about weep not child means the torture and suffering that um, uh, Goto's family faced, including Joroge, who was taken away from Siriana Secondary School where he went to for, 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 secondary, for further secondary studies and sent to the detention camp, no, the house of suffering, the house of pain, is how they used to call it. He really wept because the torture and the pain that was inflicted on his body caused him to weep. He wept, he wept. But there is like someone saying, Weep not, child, the freedom is coming. Weep not, child, weep not, child, we are going to get our land. Weep not, child, the hour of salvation is coming. You know, I always relate Weep not, child uh, uh, with the song uh, in South Africa. By then, when they were under uh, uh, the regime of these Boers, uh, the, uh, I think the song is about the freedom is coming tomorrow. I hope you have ever heard that song. The freedom is coming tomorrow. Freedom is coming tomorrow. I think it was sung by uh, one of the famous artists uh, in, in South Africa. And then when I talk about weep not, child means don't weep. Weep not. Don't weep. The liberation is coming soon. Salvation is going to come soon. So weep not child, you'll be tortured. You'll be tortured by the white people, but the freedom is coming soon. So when we go to the semantic analysis of the novel, when we go to the semantic analysis of the novel, the novel weep not child has several themes, but I'm just going to discuss the most important themes that you have to know, because uh, uh, the, the, the rest of the themes cannot have the limit. It's endless, it can have, uh, you know, Sometimes you can have even 20, 30, 50 themes. It will just depend on the way you interpret the written work. But we are just going to focus on the uh, on important things that we have to know as students, which can help us to answer our questions in the examinations. So the following are the major things found in the novel. The first theme is that of exploitation of manpower. Who are exploited? The black, the blacks or the Africans were exploited. By who? The white people. Examples of the people were exploited, do you know them? Yes, the Africans, like in Goto, the Jerry's, you see, Jerry, who is in Goto's, uh, Goto's, uh, Goto's wife, but we have Nyokabi, who is also in Goto's wife, and we have other Kenyans who were exploited by the white people. They, they were turned to be, you know, 
like uh, cheap labor. They worked in the farms, on the plantations of the white people. And actually, the weight that was given to them was not equivalent to the work which they did in the plantations. So that is a sort of exploitation. So exploitation of manpower is one of the themes which is indicated by the writer Mbubi Wasteongo, says the white men exploit the poor natives who work for them in the farms. Ngoko is a good example of the exploited Africans, those who are exploited. One good example that we can cite is Ngoko, who was employed in Horan's plantation. And he was, by the way, trusted and uh, uh, loved by his boss because he was hardworking, he went very hard, and he was trustful at the beginning. Though later on, he turned against his boss. So Ngoko is a good example of the exploited Africans. Africans were taken by force to fight during the Second World War, WW2. For example, Bori, Mwangi, and Ngoto. Bori, Mwangi, and Ngoto were taken by force to fight during the Second World War. And at the end, you find Mwangi passed away during the struggle. Only Ngoto and Bori survived. And therefore, it was not their will to fight during the war, but they were forced to fight. That is also a sort of exploitation. You force someone to do something and you don't even pay him. You don't even give something that, like a token. So that is exploitation. So Africans were taken by force to fight in WW2, for example, Bori Mwange and Ngoto. But we have even other um, characters who fought in the Second World War. And actually, uh, even one of the sons of the boss, Peter, also participated. Uh, Horan's son participated in the Second World War, and we are told that uh, he died during the struggle. The Indian employees explained the Africans who worked in their shops. We are told that when um, Joroke dropped at school, uh, he got employed to one of the Indians who had a shop. And actually, what he was paid was not equivalent to what he did. But also, we are told even in Goto, have ever worked with the Indians. They exploited him. You know, um, uh, I'm not talking something bad about the Indians, but I'm talking about some, some. There are some of the Indians who are exploited. They would just like to, you know, to use your manpower, but they don't give you something that will be uh, equivalent to what you do. Not all. I'm talking about some, some. So uh, um, we are told that the Indians' employers exploited the Africans who worked in their shops. I'm not very sure for our case here, if we have such a case, uh, just leave it. So Goto worked with an Indian before the Second World War, and uh, that is the first, the first theme, the theme of exploitation, exploitation of man, manpower, exploitation of manpower. The second theme, the second theme of the uh, novel Whip Not Char is colonial rule and dictatorship. Who was the dictator? The white people themselves were dictators. You know, um, you cannot govern people in a democratic way if they don't want you. That's why the colonial powers, the colonial states, we are characterized by violence all over Africa, not only in Kenya, even in Tanganyika by then, even in Zimbabwe, South Africa, uh, Zimbabwe, and some other parts of Africa where there was colonial, colonial rule. Colonial rule was characterized by dictatorship, you know, um, to force people to do things without their will. There was no way uh, that could be used by the white people to maintain their rule in Africa without using dictatorship. Because the Africans were not ready to be governed by the white people, by the colonial masters. So, uh, Mr. Holland and Jacobo are dictators. You know how they, they, they dictated the Africans. You know how Holland dictated the Africans. You know how Jacobo dictated the Africans. They had no right in front of him. In front of Holland, he just wanted to wait for him, whether he right or not. Jacobo, they say, so, these were dictators. 
They force people to work without their will. They are used by the colonial government to suppress the protesters. Whenever Africans protested against the uh, white people's government, uh, uh, these two dictators, Jacob and Horans, suppressed the demonstration, suppressed the strike. And actually, the, the, the strike was suppressed ruthlessly. And sometimes people were injured, some people were caught, apprehended, and tortured. Uh, is, hap is what happened to Ngotho. Ngotho was one of those who were apprehended uh, and he was sent to the house of pain. You remember he had to, uh, he had to sweat beads of bread. He suffered a lot. And only a few days after being released from the house of suffering or from the house of pain, he passed away because of the pain that was inflicted in his body. So they are used by the colonial government to suppress the, the protesters. So they are like uh, the agents of the colonial power. They were the agents of the colonial government. Jacobo as well as Mr. Horace. Ngoto's family is victimized in order to safeguard the well-being of the white man and his farm or his wealth. So the, uh, Mr. Horace did not look at other thing. What he wanted to know is, is my farm progressing? Is my farm safe? He didn't care. He didn't care whether you are suffering, whether you have torture. He could even kill you if you happen to straighten his interests. He was only curious. He was only interested with his wealth. He didn't care about humanity. So Gotho's family was one of the family which was victimized in order to safeguard the well-being of the white man and his farm or wealth. The natives, the natives are tortured by the police officers in order to confess we have taken an oath. You know, um, the Mama fighters were asked to take an oath. And we talk about the oath that you cannot speak anything in front of your enemy. Even when uh, it comes to the point that you will be tortured, but you don't act a way. You don't betray your fellow fighters. You cannot, you cannot reveal the secret. You cannot reveal the secret until when they kill you. So uh, some of the people were suspects that they were the Mau Mau activists. So they were forced to confess that they took an oath. Though some of them didn't take an oath. They were not the, they, they were not the Mau Mau fighters. But they were forced by the colonial government to confess that they took an oath. And one of them was Njoroge, I think you remember Njoroge was taken all the way from school, Siriana Secondary School, and he was sent to the house of pain. He was tortured to the state of, you know, he was unconscious, a state of coma, is how it is narrated. Uh, he was in a state of coma. And the only thing that made uh, them to, uh, to, uh, to, to a place uh, or to torture Joroge was that they suspected him to be a member of Mamau. And therefore, being a member of Mamau, it means he had taken an oath. They wanted him to confess. They wanted him to confess. But Joroge didn't know anything about being a member of Mamau. And therefore, it was really something that he didn't expect whether he could be sort of being involved in, uh, you know, in such situation. He didn't really know why they, suspect, that they suspected him to be a member of Mau Mau, uh, Mau Mau movement. Maybe because his family was involved, uh, was involved in the strike. Maybe because Boro was one of the activists. Maybe because Ngoth also read the strike. That's why they saw that maybe the whole family, uh, the whole family uh, were the members of the, members of the Mau Mau movement. And therefore, the natives were tortured by the police officers in order to confess to have taken an oath. Now, um, another thing is that of struggle, struggle for change. Struggle for change. Change. When you talk about change, change cannot just come overnight in a very simple way. Change needs sacrifice. There are people who have to sacrifice their lives in order to bring changes in the community. People like, uh, people like Ngoto, 
people like uh, Dela Nikima mentioned in, in, uh, in, the, in, 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 the, in the novel with no child, uh, people like um, uh, all those freedom fighters, all those uh, who fought during the Mau Mau war, they sacrificed their rights in order to bring change in Kenya. They wanted to have their land back. They wanted to be free from the colonial yoke. They didn't want to be dominated by the white settlers. They wanted to be free in their own land. And therefore, it could not be very easy for them to be given freedom or to be free without fighting. And when you fight, it means some of you will pass away. Some of you will drink the cup of suffering. They will have to drink using the cup of suffering like in God and others. And therefore, changes cannot happen without sacrifice. Sacrifice comes first before change. I think for those who have read the book known as The Grain of Wet, the grain of wet will have to die first, decompose, and then spout out. You see? So that is, uh, can be related with the struggle, struggle for change. So the Mama freedom fighters and other activists are seen fighting for change in the country. Some of them are dying, some of them are facing difficulties, some of them are being tortured. But all in all, what they need, they need change in their society. They need change in Kenya. They wanted change. They wanted to be uh, left alone. They didn't want the white people, they didn't want the white settlers to keep on owning the land while they meant to be landless. And therefore the only way was to fight against the colonial government. So they were nice protest and revenge against the white people. So Africans were killed, and the white people were killed as well. Uh, I think uh, I witnessed when I was trying, uh, when I narrated the story, uh, when I passed through the summary of with no child, that the Sahorans and Mr. Jacobo were assassinated. They were killed by Boro. But some of the Africans also were killed, like teacher Isaka was uh, assassinated, was killed. Uh, we have um, uh, the Nganga, Nganga, the carpenter was killed, and other, uh, and other uh, who were suspected, the suspects of Mamao movement, most of them were killed. So it was not only one-sided. The white people were killed, but at the same time, the Africans were also killed. So the protests and the revenge were very common during the uh, struggle for change in Kenya. Njorogi wishes to get education in order to change his country. Changes can be possible if people are educated. So there is a need of people to embrace education. If you want to bring change in the society, educate your people. That is very important because we know the English saying which goes, education is the key. If you don't have education, really you cannot bring changes. And therefore, uh, people in Kenya knew for sure that without educating their children, it would not be possible for them to bring the required changes. And that's why Njoroge was sent to school. Jerry Nyokabi decided to send her son to school in order to be educated. What, what was the purpose of sending Njoroge to school to be educated? Uh, uh, she thought that in the future, Njoroge could use his education to liberate his family, but also to bring changes in Kenya. He could be a leader sometimes. So, Joroge wishes to get education in order to bring changes in Kenya. Boro joins the Mamao in the forest. The strikes are called by Jomo against the exploitative employers. So, the demonstration, the strike which were conducted, were honored to get rid of the colonial government. They didn't want the white settlers to own the land. They didn't want the Africans to live as if they are not in their mother as if they are not in their own country. So they wanted the freedom. They wanted to be free. They wanted to have their land back. They didn't want to be oppressed. They didn't want to be humiliated by the white people. So Boro joined the Mamao in the forest in order to fight for change. He joined the Mamao in order to liberate his country. 
and by using the techniques, by using the skills that he had acquired, as I told you before, that Goro participated in the Second World War. And therefore he had all the skills, you know. Most of those who uh, uh, promoted or uh, who helped the achievement of independence in most of the African countries during colonial rule were those returning soldiers. And Boro was one of the returning soldiers, one of the factor for nationalism, the struggle for independence in Africa. The returning soldiers played a great role in achieving, participated in the assassination, in the carnage of Jacobo. And Jacobo is Mihaki's father. Now, how can they be friends while one family participated in the murder of the lead of another family, the head of another family? It's obvious that uh, even, when, if, even if you are friends, you can have, you know, something eating your inside. That is, you can have pain that your father killed my father. And you pretend to be my, you pretend to be my friend. Is that really friendship or enmity? You see. So they were, in, you know, they were in intrapersonal conflict. On one side, Njoroge thought, "Can we really keep on being in relation while uh, my family participated in the murder of uh, uh, the murder of uh, 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 her father? Can we keep on being friends while she exactly knows that the one who killed?" Her father is my brother boy. So there was intrapersonal conflict. The conflict is there. And therefore, they remain to be in dilemma whether they were really friends or really enemies. It was really a dilemma. So, Mamau fighters against the white man's government. There was also a conflict between the Mamau fighters and the white man's government. Because the white man's government didn't like the Mamau fighters because uh, they wanted to maintain their power, and therefore, the one who was, anyone who threatened their government was their enemy. So the Mamau fighters were enemies of the colonial government. So there was an enmity. There was a conflict between the, these two opposing sides. Another thing is that of insecurity. Insecurity. Insecurity is the opposite of security. No security. Insecurity. What can cause insecurity? Insecurity. Um, uh, when your life is in danger, then you are in insecurity. There is no security for you. And therefore, you have to find a way that you can protect yourself. So here, among the natives, since they are not sure of their safety, they were caught at any time. There was cut you. That is, most of them were caught and sent to the house of pain. And some of them were killed and abandoned in the streets. And then the state of security was not really good in Kenya. It was not good. Sometimes could move from home during the morning. And if you don't see him or her two days, you know he's already dead. Maybe has been caught, sent to the house of pain, or killed, short day. So here among the natives, uh, since they are not sure of their safety. And the one who is threatening their safety is the colonial government. There was a state, a state of emergence, a state of emergence which was announced, whereby many people were killed everywhere and their bodies were abandoned in the streets. That is insecurity. The curfew and the detention camps are threats to people's lives. Referred to Ngoko, who was tortured and raped later, when they released him, they had already inflicted enough pain to him. So he passed away. Few days, he passed away. Uh, and therefore, it was something that actually uh, caused the people in Kenya to be, you know, they were anxious. They didn't, they didn't trust the existing government. They were not safe. They were not safe. At any time they could be attacked, at any time they could be caught, they could be, uh, you know, sent to the house of pain, they could be put in, uh, into detention camps, and there was no security, no security. So when you talk about the state of emergence, it means people are not even allowed sometimes to walk during the night. A state of emergence was announced, especially after the strike, that people are not allowed to move during the night. If you have to be caught, 
then you have to suffer the consequence. Yeah, you can be sent to the house of pain. And my dear students, I hope when I mention the house of pain, you understand it's pain. There you meet people who are trained, who are trained how to administer pain to human beings. And therefore, by the time when you get out of there, you can know how pain can be administered. So um, we have another theme, the theme of betrayal. Betrayal. My dear students, you remember betrayal? Betrayal. It's very common in most of the most of the ritual works. Betrayal is very common. It's one of the things which is very common in most of the ritual works. Betrayal. Betrayal means you have an agreement with someone and then you go against the agreement. That is betrayal. You act to be good to someone, while in actual sense you are not good. By the time when somebody leaves, you start talking bad things about him or her. You are a betrayer, a traitor. So, um, Jacob betrays his fellow Africans for joining the white man's government. We didn't expect Jacob to be uh, on the side of the white people. We didn't. Because he was a Kenyan, a black African. And therefore, we didn't expect a black African to support the white people. But it happened. And even today we have some people who support, you know, uh, some of the exploitative systems of the, you know, it's not, I, I don't mention all the white people, but some. Yeah, some. So Jacob betrays his fellow Africans for joining the white man's government. Ngoko also betrayed his family when he attacked Jacob during the workers' strike. That was a betrayal. You know, Mr. Horan's trusted in Ngoko. He even shared secrets, some of the secrets that he had, he involved in Gotho. And sometimes he even involved him in his plans, that I plan to do this, I plan to do this. But at the end of the day, we can see Gotho was one of those who participated in the workers' strike. So Mr. Horan said many speeches. He didn't really believe that Gotho, a close friend of him, someone he trusted, Participating in the workers' strike, he didn't believe it. So that was another betrayal indicated in the novel Weep No Child. Gotho betrayed his family when he attacked Jacobs during workers' strike. Maybe you can ask yourself, how did Gotho betray his family? You know the relationship between Mihaki and Yorogi? They were friends. So by Gotho betraying Jacobs' family, it means he also betrayed Joroge, his son. Because anything which would be done by Ngoko had its repercussion on the relationship between Muihaki and Joroge. So that is betrayal. But also, Jacobo betrayed his fellow Africans, sorry, Got there. Mwihaki. Mwihaki betrays Njoroge by um, inviting him to a home where she knows there is enmity between their parents. And therefore, she was not supposed to invite uh, to a home because she exactly knew that there was enmity between the two families. And therefore, by inviting your enemy to your family, that is betrayal. So Mihaki betrays Joroge by inviting him to her home while she knows there is an enmity between their parents. But also, Boro betrayed his family, especially his brother Joroge, when he killed Mr. Jacob. And he exactly knew that Mihaki and Joroge were very close friends. And Joroge is his young brother. So by killing Jacob, it was a very big betrayal. But there was no other way he could do. There was no way he could do. Being an activist, a Mau fighter, he could kill anyone, even his young brother, if he betrayed him. We have another theme, the theme of victimization. Victimization. What is victimization? My dear students and other viewers, victimization. What does it mean by to victimize someone? Victimize. Victimization. Victimization has to do with, you know, uh, punishing someone for a certain, you know, it's like uh, uh, you give a punishment to someone who doesn't deserve. You see? 
you give a punishment, you, you punish someone who doesn't deserve. He didn't do that crime, but you just punish him. You suspect someone to have done something, and, he, and then you humiliate or oppress him. That is victimization. So in short, we can simply say, a victimization means to be accused for a crime that you are innocent about, or the put in hardship unfairly. To be put in hardship unfairly, that it's not fair. You put someone in hardship while you didn't do that particular thing. So this happened during colonial rule. Most of the Africans were victimized. They were punished while they didn't deserve to be punished. For example, Joronge, he knew nothing about the Mau Mau fighters. He, he just used to hear. And he didn't even know the meaning of Mau Mau, you see? But he was sent to the house of pain. You talk of teacher Isaka, teacher Isaka, and other suspects were killed, you know, being suspected and then you get killed, and then you are killed. It's victimization. Had it been that uh, maybe someone participated, someone was the member of the Mau Mau fighters, that would be right. But for someone whom they, they had no enough information about him, that was the member, he was the fighter of Mau Mau movement, and then you, uh, you, know, you apprehend him, you torture him, to the extent of even passing away, that is victimization. So when you talk about victimization, uh, that is what it means to be accused for a crime that you are innocent about or being put in hardship unfairly. So Joroge is victimized for his brother's crime which causes him to discontinue with his studies. He was victimized to the extent that he stopped going to school because when he was sent to the house of pain, he was taken all the way from school, from Syriana Secondary School. And we are told that he didn't go back to school. He ended there. But he was innocent. He didn't, he, he was not the, he was not the Mau Mau fighter. He was not the activist. He was just a mere student. Maybe it's because of uh, uh, what was done by his family, especially Paul. That is what caused him to be suspected as one of the, one of the uh, Mau Mau fighters. But he was innocent. So therefore he was victimized. So Joroge is victimized for his brother's crime, which caused him to discontinue with his studies. The Baba, remember the Baba? The Baba, you know the Baba? Yeah. Uh, I think we know them. We always go there to cut our hair. Yeah. Oh, shape. The Baba Ganga, the carpenter. You remember the Ganga the carpenter? And four other people were killed because they were suspected that they were Mau Mau freedom fighters. You know what happened to Baba, the Baba? People used to gather there discussing different issues concerning their country. And now, most of those who were suspected to be freedom fighters used to, be, uh, used to discuss different issues about their country right there, the Baba. So why others are shaming there, Others are discussing, exchanging ideas. So Baba was suspected that he, he could not let these people to discuss such issues concerning this uh, Mau Mau at his working place. And therefore, he was suspected to be uh, the Mau Mau activist. And therefore, he was killed ruthlessly. But also Nganga, Nganga, Nganga provided a piece of land to Ngoso. And I think this is one of the things which made him to suspect him to be one of the Mau Mau activists. Why should you give a land to a person who caused violence, to a person uh, who was a ringleader of uh, the strike, the workers' strike? What, how, 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 how comes that you feel very pity to that person and give him a piece of land? I think those are the thought that they had and they suspected that this might be one of the, one of the Mau Mau activists. So the Baba Ganga and other four uh, and other four were killed for being suspected that they are the Mau Mau activists. I think in the group of four there is also teacher Isaka who was also killed. He was suspected that he was uh, regardless of being uh, the church leader because apart from being a teacher he was also a preacher. He used to preach. 
So they, they suspect that during his preachings, when he was preaching people, he planted them with seeds of hatred to hate the colonial government. And therefore, uh, they realized that uh, 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 teacher Isaka was not a preacher, but he was a secret, you know, a secret Mamao activist who pretended to be a preacher while he was not a preacher. So he was also killed, he was among those who were killed. So my dear students, uh, we are done with the book Weep Not Child. And I'm sure that you have really enjoyed the book Weep Not Child. And it's good that we have already also passed through the uh, play, known as This Time Tomorrow. They are uh, closely related, you know, the, the issues which are raised in uh, This Time Tomorrow and the issues which are raised in uh, uh, Weep Not Child, it's like part one and part two, you know. But when we, when we talk about after, uh, before, 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 uh, it is during the colonial rule, we talk of uh, whip not child. We talk of after colonial rule, that is this time tomorrow. So the things which are done by the colonial government, the ones which are portrayed in the, this time tomorrow, can be developed from whip not child. The land was taken, eh? like the stranger saying, we are promised that the land could be, uh, could be given to the citizens. Where is the land? The land is taken. By who? The land is now not taken by the white settlers. It is taken by the Africans, the minority. The minority are the ones who are enjoying the cake of, the cake of independence. So that marks the end of our, uh, our, uh, our novel, Weep Not Child. But before I leave uh, the platform, let me leave you some as, uh, the assignment, and I'm sure that you already know the summary, you pass through the summary of the novel with No Child, and the way I, uh, I summarize the novel, I'm not very sure if someone uh, would not be able to answer these questions. We have passed through the characterization, the characters and characterization, but even more we have uh, gone through the thematic analysis. So we have already uh, uh, covered everything. That is, we have the characters, we know the characters, we, have, we know the characterization, we know the themes which are found in the, uh, in the novel with no child. And we can stand down in a position to answer the questions uh, uh, that you can see on uh, the screen. The first question is, uh, the colonial state was characterized by violence and victimization to maintain its power. Referring to any two readings, discuss the truth of this statement. The colonial state was characterized by violence and victimization to maintain its power. Referring to the two readings, discuss the truth of this statement. My dear students and other viewers, can you face some difficulties to answer this question? It is straightforward. And one of the things that we have already discussed is about victimization. And you have the examples that you can give, you can cite examples. You can even state how the colonial government was cruel to people. You can cite examples of, you know, uh, how the colonial government acted in a, a dictatorial way, that is, uh, a tyrannical way of reading. That is, there was no way they could maintain their power. They could maintain their government without using uh, uh, dictatorship. So the colonial state was characterized by violence. We talk of the, uh, we talk of the you know, um, how people suffered, how people were tortured by the colonial government. The strikes which were conducted in the way they were suppressed by the white people. You can explain, you can cite examples from the, from the book. Therefore, when you put them together, violence and victimization, then you can be able uh, to answer the question. You know what you have to stick to? Violence. Why violence? You see? Victimization. Why victimization? You see? Violence because people were not satisfied. They were dissatisfied. And therefore, every now and then, the colonial government had to suppress violence, strikes everywhere. People are not satisfied. Victimization, suspecting everyone, everyone who comes in, no, everyone who 
uh, talks to Boro or everyone who comes close, uh, exchanging ideas with the freedom, with the Maumau suspect is also a suspect, that is victimization. And this is very common to those governments which does not believe themselves. Those who are in power, but they know exactly that the people don't want them. And therefore, the only way they can maintain their government or they can remain in power is through victimization. Okay, I think I've given you some clues that you can use to answer this question. The second question, the arrival of Europeans in Africa was a source of many problems, some of which are still disturbing the modern African state today. The final 22 novels they've done justify the above statement. The arrival of Europeans to Africa was a source of many problems, some of which are still disturbing the modern African states today. Referring to the two novels they've done justify the above statement. This question is also very simple. Just talk of uh, how life used to be before they come to the white people. And when the white people came to Africa during colonization, what happened to the Africans? What happened to the Africans? You have a lot of examples that you can cite from the book with not Child. But you can also cite other, you can use another book different from Whip Not Child. But because our focus today is about Whip Not Child, uh, therefore you will stand in a position to extract or uh, take examples from the book Whip Not Child. When the white people arrived in Kenya, the Kenyans had their own land, the land which was given to them by Mumbe and Gikuyu, their ancestors. But when the white people came, the land was snatched, the land was alienated, it was taken from the hands of the Africans. So the Africans remained landless. The Africans, you know, turned the laborers in the white people's uh, plantations, like Mr. Horace, you see? So, um, uh, the Africans betrayed each other, they killed each other, they were incited to kill each other, as how Mr. Horace did. He incited the Africans to kill each other. He used some of those who were against the Mau Mau movement to kill those who were the suspects of Mau Mau movement. You see? A uh, good example is Mr. Jacobo. He used his position to humiliate Africans. He's the one who apprehended or is the one who arrested him uh, by using his guts. He's the one who ordered them to arrest him God, and the old man suffered peacefully. And at the end of the day, he passed away because of the pain that was inflicted to him. So, uh, you know, after the coming of the white people, there were a lot of problems which were created by their government. Because it was a violent state, you know. It was a tyrannical, it, it was a tyrannical type of government, a dictatorial type of government. And therefore, there was no peace. There was no peace. The governed ones were not ready to keep on being dominated, being governed by a tyrannical type of government or by a dictatorial type of government. So you have just to cite the problems which were caused by the coming of the white people. Cite those problems which, are, um, uh, which were um, caused by the coming of the white people. But we have to go further. We are told that the same problems are still disturbing the African states even today. We are independent, but we still have the legacy, some of the problems facing most of the African states, even today. We are talking about national, we are talking about uh, what you call neocolonialism, neocolonialism in Africa, you see. We still have some parts of Africa where the land is still in the, in the, land, in the hands of the white settlers. You have examples of Zimbabwe, the land was owned by the white settlers, almost 80% of the land was owned by the white settlers. Thank God, late Mugabe, Robert Mugabe, uh, took action to take the land from the settlers and gave it to the, to the Africans. But also in Kenya, in Kenya, the problem of land is still there. There are people who have monopolized the land. They, they are fellow Africans. They have very big plantations. But the normal citizens in Kenya, they don't have the land. They don't have the land. You know, owning one acre or two acres in Kenya, you are a rich man. We are very fortunate here in Tanzania because we are under, I think it was peasant farming or uh, plantation farming. When you go back to history, 
but we had, we had some settlers in a few parts of Tanganyika by then, but most of the land remained in the hands of the Africans. Most of the land remained in the hands of the uh, Tanzanians. And that's why you can find we have plenty of land for cultivation. But uh, in most of those colonies, which are known as, you know, like um, uh, the settlers' homes, the settlers' second home, most of the land was taken by the white settlers. Yeah. Kenya being one example, Zimbabwe is another example, but even in South Africa, yeah, I'm not very sure if they have, the peasants have enough land for cultivation. But also we have problems of, you know, isolation, betrayal, you can find Africans betraying their fellow Africans. We still have the problem even today. We have Africans who betray their fellow Africans. They are even ready to be given money eh, by the colonial you know, the ex-colonial masters so that they can cause havoc, they can cause violence in their own country. And this has been blocked uh, through the back door of, uh, uh, you know, what you call matpatism, matpatism, having many political parties. And sometimes, you know, matpatism is good, but when it, uh, when it is uh, not uh, run, in a good way, it can be the result of violence in the state. It can be uh, the source of conflict among people in the, in the country. Yeah, some people can be used like the way Jacob was used by uh, by Mr. Horans and the colonial government to humiliate others, to cause suffering to other people. So I'm sure having passed through the summary and having passed through the semantic analysis. You can tell it, you can, you can now be able, you can, you can be able to answer this question and you can provide more than enough examples to support uh, the question. So based on the arrival of the white people, okay, the arrival of the white people, what are the problems which are brought by the colonial government and do those problems exist even today? Do we have the same problems existing in most of the African states? You can cite examples of those problems, which are the result of the colonial government. The third question, from two novels we have done in this section, choose two characters, one from each novel, and examine in detail how they have been affected by the conflicts in the society. Very good. I think I don't need even to give some clues for this. You know the character who faced problems the problems we when you start with the summary of whip not charge up to the end when you finish up with the assignment. My dear students, you have to do those questions which I'm going to leave you with. This is the assignment and it should be done. By saying so, I wish you a very success and a good day to you. Thank you very much. Bye.